airlines explain how ticket prices are formed. Have you ever asked yourself, why the heck are airfares so expensive? Well, airlines are now letting us in on how they come up with these prices. But knowing the why and how isn't going to help save money. So stick around and we'll share some strategies to help you fly cheaper. Oh, and for your in-flight entertainment, watch out for three light bulbs hidden throughout this video. Be the first to find them all and comment below the times when they appear. Aircraft fuel, 26%. You might still believe that planes fly with the power of magic, but the truth is they use jet fuel. And it happens to be one of the most expensive factors in ticket pricing. Different types of planes need a certain amount of fuel, and this information can easily be found on the website of the airline or the plane's manufacturer. To show you just how expensive fueling the plane is, here's a simple calculation. To make a 10-hour flight, it takes a jumbo jet about 70 tons of fuel, which costs around $42,500. Man, and I thought gas prices were high. Passenger and luggage services, 26%. First off, this includes passenger services on the flight, such as food, water, blankets, entertainment, and so on. Loading, storing, and transporting the luggage, both on the plane and at the airport, is counted here as well. And you have to consider call centers, websites, statistics, and customer service. Finally, working with the plane itself costs a lot of money, like prepping it for takeoff, safety checks, parking it, and things like that. Aircraft service, 16%. This has to do with insurance and minor repairs on the plane. It might include painting and routine maintenance in general. Salaries, 10%. Of course, all the airline's employees, like the pilots, flight attendants, and other staff, like to get paid for their hard work. Depreciation and leasing, 8%. Depreciation is a gradual decrease in the cost of the plane itself due to its aging and wear and tear over time. If the plane is property, then these costs are covered by the owner. But if the plane is rented, and this is a really common thing known as aviation leasing, then it's paid by the person who's using the plane at the time, aka you. Advertisement and administrative costs, 5%. This is the money that airlines use for marketing, promotion, taxes, and some other expenses. These costs can fluctuate depending on the situation in the country where the airline is based. Air navigation fees and meteorological support, 9%. Weather conditions can affect flight schedules or even cause serious problems you'd rather avoid. Cooperating with meteorological bureaus helps airlines minimize the risks and uncomfortable flight conditions caused by the weather. Keeping track of the aircraft during the flight and payments to airports are also included in the final 9% of the ticket cost. Knowing the factors that go into ticket pricing might help you understand why airfares are so high. But I'm sure you still want to know how you can save some money, right? Of course, you can't do anything about the things we just covered, but you can change the following. 1. Use comparison sites. You've probably heard of them. Orbitz, Kayak, Travelocity, Priceline, and so on. These price comparison sites, known as aggregators, help you search the whole internet for the best deal. They compare offers from all the different airlines and make a nice convenient list of available flights for you. It's basically the easiest and most reliable way to find tickets at the lowest price. You need only one website that does all the searching for you. But you really shouldn't depend on just one comparison site. They all can sort the results differently, so we recommend using different aggregators. The price difference can be from 2% to 7% of the full price of the ticket. Plus, these websites have a lot of convenient features, like email subscriptions to the best offers, bonuses, and other cool stuff that can help you save a lot of money. 2. Join travel groups on social media. Sometimes you can learn more useful information from fellow travelers looking for good deals rather than relying on airlines or pop-up ads. Facebook and other social networking sites, as well as travel-themed forums and pages, have special groups where people exchange their experiences with different airlines. Subscribe to travel bloggers who often have giveaways when they partner with major airlines. You might not win a free trip, but at least save some coin with their discount codes. Plus, you'll get a great source of travel inspiration. 3. Choose flights with connections. Direct flights are almost always more expensive than those with connections because, you know, fuel consumption and all. And you can actually plan your connecting flights in smart and productive ways. Travelers often use stopovers, which are connections lasting longer than 24 hours. This is a great way to see more and save a lot of money. After you buy a connecting flight ticket, you need to apply for a stopover. But before you do that, make sure that your flight has this feature. 
4. Use the Saturday night rule. According to this rule, if you spend the night from Saturday to Sunday at your destination, the tickets will be much cheaper. This is due to airlines' price discrimination against those traveling on business. Business travelers usually have to keep to a pretty strict itinerary, and they're more willing to pay higher prices if it means they can spend the weekend at home. Tourists, however, aren't so restricted, so use this to your advantage. 5. Fly on the right days. Many airlines change the ticket prices depending on the departure days. Most of the time, the cheapest days are Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. From Friday to Sunday and on holidays, prices are higher. This little trick doesn't work for popular business flights, though, because business travelers usually book flights on weekdays. 6. Change the dates. If specific dates don't really matter to you, play around with the departure and arrival dates a little. A 3, 5, or even 7-day difference can save you a lot of money. Some comparison sites have special calendars for this purpose. And if your travel dates really don't matter, for example, you just need to fly sometime in a certain month, you can use the same calendars. They'll show you the prices for all the tickets available that month. Be flexible, it's worth it. And try to travel off-season too if it's possible. 7. Try different destinations. Booking sites don't only help you pick a more affordable date, but a cheaper destination too. If you're flying to Europe, for example, you'll see that tickets through airports that are literally an hour's drive away from each other may come at totally different prices. If you have enough time, embrace this opportunity to see another city or even country. 8. Sign up for loyalty programs. By signing up for loyalty programs and saving your frequent flyer miles, you can get coupons for duty-free purchases, free tickets, and discounts on hotels. Practically all airlines offer these programs to their loyal clients. 9. Read the fine print. When booking tickets, we recommend thoroughly reading all the terms and conditions. Some airlines and travel sites like to sneak in different payment fees. It's a good idea to stay cautious and attentive. 10. Eliminate extra costs. Pack wisely and weigh your bag at home before going to the airport so that you aren't slapped with any unexpected fees. You can even make double sure by traveling with a carry-on only. Bring your own snacks if you're traveling with a carrier that sells food on board. If you can avoid checked or heavy bag fees and paying for in-flight meals, you'll get a ticket at the lowest, most basic price. Do you have any special tricks up your sleeve when purchasing plane tickets? Share with us in the comment section. Also, let us know if you managed to find the three light bulbs. Give us a like if you found this video useful and subscribe to our channel. Stay with us on the Bright Side.